Hello fantastic people! In this tutorial we'll create the doors that can be opened by picking up the right key. We'll start by creating the doors, then we'll create reusable collision detection script, which we'll of course use for our key. We'll finish off by creating simple script which will allow us to conveniently change the indicator and key colors at the same time. I start by creating new empty object and call it door. I drag and drop my door sprite under it. Then I rename it to door sprite and reset its transform. I place the door at the right position so it's slightly easier to animate it later on. Then under my empty object I drag another sprite, this time for the key indicator. I place it above the door. Then under that indicator I place small white circle. The color is very important, you'll see why in a second. Then I add the box collider to my door sprite object and adjust its size. Then I focus on the door object by clicking on it in the hierarchy and open the animation window. I do it by going to window, animation, animation. I create a new animation and call it door underscore open. I click the red record button and then on the door sprite object. On the timeline I click on the one second. And then in the scene window I adjust the sprite position. The animations are looping by default, so I have to find my animation and adjust the looping setting. Then once again I click on the door object and open the animator window. I do it by going to window, animation, animator. If we start the game now we'll see that the door is automatically opening. That's happening because the open animation is the first we created for door object. So it simply became the default animation. To fix that in the animator I create empty state. I rename it to door idle. I click on it right mouse button and select set as layer default state. Now I create new transition from it to the door open. To trigger that transition we'll need a parameter. We'll create one of type trigger. Let's simply call it open. We select it as a condition for the transition and then clear the exit time and transition duration settings. That's because we don't want any delay before the door open animation starts playing. To test it out I place the animator under the hierarchy. If we set the trigger while the game is playing we'll see the door opening. Fantastic! So let's create a door script that will do it for us. I call the script simply door. I assign the script to my door object and open it. As usual I'm starting by doing a little bit of cleanup. We'll create public open method, but in order for it to work we need a field with reference to the animator. Then we also need the actual animator, so we'll grab and store it inside the awake method. Now we'll call on it the set trigger method with open parameter. To make testing easier we add the attribute context menu with a parameter open. This will allow us to call the method directly from the inspector. So once we start the game we no longer have to use the animator. We can simply call the method directly from the script. And we see our method is working as expected. Awesome. It's time to add the key. I drag and drop its sprite into the level. And rename the object to key. As you see my key and the key indicator are white. That will allow me to conveniently adjust the color using the color property of the sprite renderer. That means I can have multiple colors of the keys with just one sprite. Now I'm adding the collider 2D to the key object. And now time to create another script. Let's call this one collision detector. We'll create a reusable script which will allow you to trigger different type of actions when the collision occurs. Before I open the script I assign it to the key object. Once again I start by removing the unnecessary stuff. Then I add two unit events, one called collision entered and another one called collision exit. In case you never worked with the unit events you can check out this tutorial. Now I add private serialized field of type string called collider script. We'll use that field to identify the objects that should trigger our events. There are better ways to do that, for example using the layer mask, but I don't want to complicate the tutorial too much. Now we add on collision enter to the method. In the first line we check if the object that triggered the collision has the script we are looking for. If so, we invoke the collision entered event. We do exactly the same things for the on collision exit to the. 
let's go back to Unity. Our little elf character has the platform movement script on it. Let's put that information on our collision detector. Then when the collision occurs, let's perform two actions. First, let's deactivate the key itself. And then let's of course call the open method on the door script. Let's test it out. Fantastic. Now let's make it a little bit more reusable. First I move the key on top of the key indicator. Then in the hierarchy I put the key under the door object. Now I drag and drop the door object onto the project window and this turns it into the prefab. Having the key as a part of the prefab is pretty convenient. This way the references on the Unity events will be preserved. So once we drop the prefab into the level, the whole setup is as easy as setting the key position and the key color. That reminds me that currently we have to set up the color of the indicator and color of the key separately. Let's do something about it. I create new script and call it color aligner. Then I assign it to one of the doors and open it. The script of course. Now clean up and two private serialized fields. First one to store the color we want to assign to our sprite renderers and then second one to store the list of the sprite renderers that will receive that color. Then we can use one of the event functions called onValidate. The method executes every time we adjust something in the inspector. So you can use it for validation or adjusting the values, like in this case. Inside of it we simply iterate through all the renderers and change their color to the color we store in our field. Now we assign the renderers and change their color. We also apply the changes to the prefab. This way the script will be automatically added to all other instances of that prefab. And yay, everything is working. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help me please the algorithm gods, don't forget to like and comment this video. Also, just to let you know, the assets used for this video will be available for my patrons on the patreon.com ptit. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.